So welcome everyone to the Metrics International Forum. The forum is organized by the Meta Research Innovation Center at Stanford, for short metrics. The center is directed by John Ioannidis and Steve Goodman, and we are a research group and fellowship program dedicated to finding ways to improve the validity and transparency of scientific research. I'm Max Siebert, a postdoc at Metrics, and I will be today's moderator. All of our international forums are reported and can be accessed on our website. Please keep your questions until the end or write them in the chat during the presentation. Our presenter today is Anna Abalkina. Anna is a research fellow at Freie Universität in Berlin and Germany. She earned her PhD from the University of Perugia in Italy with a background in international economics. However, she later shifted her research focus to corruption in higher education, academic misconduct, plagiarism, paper mills, and predatory and hijacked journals. Her research not only involves detecting and analyzing scientific misconduct, but also explaining its costs and consequences. So if you're ready, Anna, we can start. Um, thank you very much. I'm really excited and delighted to give a presentation today. So uh, my presentation is devoted to paper mills, challenges, current understanding, and unanswered questions. Uh, so I would like to um, explain what are the reasons to talk about paper mills, not only about the challenges of paper mills nowadays, but uh, paper mills as a continuation of uh, current discussion on research misconduct and why researchers deviate their behavior from good scientific practices. So if earlier we focused the research on scientific misconduct and why individual researchers um, by themselves violated scientific ethics. So now we deal with the commercial misconduct. Um, so we still have gaps in understanding the reasons that stand behind the purchase of papers in paper mills. And there is only one study that I know, which surveyed scholars who submitted papers through broker companies or paper mills, and then the, that papers uh, have been retracted by a journal Thinking Skills and Creativity. And actually, Shakirova, who published this study, she interviewed uh, some scholars and the answers were uh, unexpected because scholars with the retracted papers, they believed that these retractions were an unfortunate misunderstanding from the side of the journal. So this kind of picture raises a lot of further questions. So my outline for the presentation is to uh, speak about the definition, operations, and business models of paper mills, to estimate the scale of the problem of paper mills, how paper mills are detected, uh, what are the anomalies, collaboration anomalies of uh, papers originated from paper mills and how this information can help us to um, detect and identify other papers and what are current challenges of uh, paper mill papers. So what are paper mills? Paper mills represent for-profit business that sells papers or co-authorships and or applies a series of dishonest practices to publish a paper. So first of all, papers from paper mills, they constitute an authorship fraud because money involved. But at the same time, there is evidence that papers from paper mills, they contaminate literature because of other types of misconduct plagiarism, falsification, fabrication of data images, results. So what, uh, what is different with misconduct? That paper mills commercialize scientific misconduct. Before the misconduct was produced just by individual researchers, well, individual researcher plagiarized somebody's paper, nowadays 
uh, researchers buy co-authorships and they may not understand that the papers uh, which they purchase can contain plagiarism or fabrication or falsification of data. So misconduct nowadays became also a business. Uh, paper mills, they uh, mimic legitimate business of broker-like or consultation companies. Many of them, they possess official legal registration, so they pay taxes. Some paper mills also receive uh, business awards in their local countries. And often they offer publication-related services, like translation of manuscripts or services to choose a journal and so on. But at the same time, they sell co-authorship slots or violate peer review process. So what is the difference between paper mills and um, broker companies, legitimate companies, is that paper mills, they guarantee the publication of a paper and indexation in bibliographic databases. So these are examples of some paper mills that offer their services online. Um, some of the websites were automatically translated into English because they are situated in different countries and offer services to, uh, to some local customers. Or on social media, this is one of the attachments uh, in the social media when one could buy a authorship slot in just a series of papers. So what kind of business models uh, of paper mills? This is a still gap in the literature. We don't, we don't have the big picture of how paper mills work. So they have, as per my evidence, paper mills have a variety of business models because they can just sell papers or authorship slots, which are written by uh, ghostwriters. Um, one paper mill, for example, uh, sells topics, so not all re ready papers, and when slots are sold, ghostwriter writes a paper. Uh, some paper mills paraphrase and revise substantially a paper written by an author, I mean by a real author, but the amount of uh, revision is so substantial that it also constitutes an authorship fraud. And also some paper mills just violate peer review process to submit papers written by, by real authors. So no ghostwriter was involved. Um, and this is just evidence. So we have no full picture of uh, business models. So they, there are also Iranian paper mills where some real authors um, offer their paper and then a paper mill sells co-authorship slots in this paper. Also, what is important to mention that paper mills are international business. Paper mills collaborate between each other. So there is evidence that, well, some Iranian paper mills um, collaborated with Russian paper mills and Russian paper mills offered some papers produced by Iranian paper mill. They also um, go abroad, and this is just a case study of several paper mills in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Um, you can see, for example, the Paper Mill International Publisher. It has a website in many languages with a representative in Azerbaijan or Tanupro paper mill that has a subsidiary in Kazakhstan. And last year they opened a subsidiary, I mean a company, a subsidiary um, in Kyrgyzstan. They, this Tanopro paper mill purchased assets, assets of a Russian paper mill world scientific publications or another paper mill based in Russia. Uh, has a, a subsidiary science publisher in Latvia. So we can see that uh, actually paper mills, they, they act like uh, multinational companies with uh, subsidiaries abroad. Uh, when um, first papers from 
uh, paper mills appear. According to the Retraction Watch database, first papers from paper mills uh, retracted were published in 2004 and, uh, and 2007. But we can see an increase of fake papers since 2017, according to a Retraction Watch database. And mainly, uh, these papers mainly were associated with, with China. Since 2019, we can see the increased number of paper mill papers from other countries. Why this period? Um, well, I, this is still a question. But I can um, provide an answer based on the experience in um, some countries in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, where there were a lot of companies relied on predatory journals. So scholars just submitted their papers to predatory journals. But at the same time, this was the period when Scopus and Web of Science started to delist such journals from that databases in this period, Scopus delisted just hundreds of journals uh, because of publication concerns. And so broker companies, which specialized on submissions to predatory journals, found that this strategy is not effective because at any time the journals can be excluded. And I have evidence from many broker companies that then turned to paper mills who uh, started to author, offer co-authorship slots for sale or papers for sale. And they started to um, submit papers to reputable journals with violation of um, peer review. So the next question, how, so fantastic paper mills and where to find them, how we can understand that a certain paper is from a paper mill. So primarily a paper mill can be detected by a journal where a paper was submitted because of peer review fraud, uh, because of common submission practices, for example, because um, a paper was uh, just a series of papers uh, submitted by uh, a single profile or with the same emails, or because of request of the authorship changes after acceptance of the manuscript. There are also other signals and red flags of paper mills that can be detected both by publishers and the academic community when the paper has been published. What we know uh, that paper mills tend to produce papers massively, and that's why they have common structures and templates. There is evidence that paper mill papers contain plagiarism, especially translation plagiarism. So paper mill papers in different countries where English is not the native language, they take some manuscripts written their local language and then translate it into English. And uh, plagiarism or tax similarity detection tools are not able to detect this as a plagiarism because they don't include this specific pair of languages. Uh, um, also, in certain disciplines, there is fabrication, falsification of data, text, and images, and there are a lot of uh, research integrity experts and sleuths who detect, especially in biomedicine, who detect um, uh, falsification of images. There could be incorrect nucleotide sequence regions, uh, also in uh, biomedicine, could be citation manipulations, offer detections, weird emails and tortured phrases. So there are a lot of red flags where we can find um, the, the fraud in, in papers. Uh, and knowing all this information, uh, we have some databases, not official for sure, um, uh, databases of papers from paper mills which were taken by a data analyst, Adam Day, who trained 
a software uh, to um, detect and predict other papers from paper mills. And so on this slide, you can see um, data provided by Adam Day and then published an article in Nature. So how many papers are from paper mills? We can see that since 2000, since the year 2000, the, there is a significant increase in the percentage of papers that have similarities with already detected uh, paper mill papers. And in 2022, it's about 1.7% of all papers published during this year. So according to Adam Day, nowadays there are 400,000 papers from paper mills. And it's plausible and to my mind is conservative estimate. So also some data uh, about 1.52% of papers published in 2022 probably originate from paper mills. And 3% of papers in medicine and biology can be associated with paper mills. Uh, but we have to uh, take in consideration that what we know about paper mill paper mills is only about massive production of paper mill papers. We don't have much information about small paper mills or about uh, paper mills in uh, certain countries, because still we have very fragmented knowledge of paper mills. Uh, we have no idea about paper mills in Latin America, maybe with uh, except Peru, um, or we don't know much about paper mills in humanities, but it doesn't, but I hypothesize that there are papers in all disciplines. So this slide uh, represents the retractions of papers uh, that originate from paper mills and where retraction notices mention that these papers have been retracted because of their association with paper mills. Uh, so with a green, you can see the increase of papers published in a certain year, and with red, the year when these papers have been retracted. So we can see that since the year 2000, the massive retraction of paper, paper mill papers began here. You can see some news from uh, media or online blogs about massive retractions from from journals. As for um, uh, disciplines, this is a tricky question because here I included data. I looked at the retraction data last year in February uh, 2023, and we can see it's marked with green that the majority of papers associated uh, with paper mills uh, were published in biology or microbiology and much less papers in other disciplines. But uh, this is because uh, the retraction watch database is biased um, and uh, there are less retractions in other disciplines and we can see that in the year last year there were there were more, more retractions in other um, uh, disciplines like business and computer sciences and in social sciences and so on and so forth um, so the next question that i would like to talk about as we uh, have some evidence of paper mills, but how we can get the full picture. Because what I have talked now about retractions, and um, I, I believe that the retraction watch database doesn't reflect the full picture of uh, retractions and publications of paper mills, because many papers are not retracted or be because many papers 
are not identified. So there are several papers and methods on how we can see a bigger picture of uh, fraudulent signs. One method is to look at peer-reviewed applications. Why? Because we have evidence that paper mills actually tend to violate peer review process, and we have evidence that the uh, their peer review reports uh, have duplications. And so this is the paper of Adam Day, who actually uh, worked for Sage Publications, and he had access to peer review reports, and uh, he could detect uh, 357 peer review peer reviewers who produced duplicate comments, and uh, probably 47 accounts are controlled by paper mills. Another study that I did uh, together with Dorothy Bishop, she's a professor in psychology, and we scrutinized six papers in the Journal of Community Psychology, and this journal has open peer review and all peer reviews can be openly assessed. So why this journal and why six papers? Because actually it was a part of uh, the study on uh, Tanopro paper mill broker company. It's called Tanopro because the specific feature, a specific pattern of this paper mill was to submit papers with absolutely weird emails where uh, Tanopro was one of the weird domains uh, which was used by this paper mill, uh, and it was the most frequent uh, domain. And we found a lot of, so I found just more than 1,000 papers from this uh, paper mill, and six of them uh, had open peer review, and it was possible to assess. So but this is the example of weird emails that had extensions associated with India, Germany, or United Kingdom, but all the scholars were from Eastern Europe. Um, and so what we find that all six papers had serious flaws, uh, citations to predatory journals, citations to suspicious journals, peer review had superficial comments, they were submitted on the same day, and all peer reviewers were had fake identities. I mean, they were not real people. So this is example where peer review reports, the first peer review report and the second round have been submitted on the same day. Um, and this is the example of a peer review. It has really super, superficial comments like um, refresh the literature, or describe more clearly the obtained results. And this paper was reviewed by Eric Leitmeyer. And who is Eric Leitmeyer? This is a fake person. So it's not possible to find any publications by Eric Leitmeyer, but uh, this profile has peer review reports on it. Another method that um, is possible to use and to detect um, and predict other papers um, is uh, statistical methods. So uh, this paper by uh, Gonzalez Marquez um, and her co-authors have been published just, I, I guess, a week ago. So this paper uh, um, includes a study on all the corpus of the, of papers in biomedicine. So they um, downloaded all PubMed and then they um, just analyzed each abstract with numeric data. So they analyzed statistical similarity between papers and they found that if to plot retracted papers on this um, uh, visualization, you can see that retracted papers are clustered, so they have similarity. And this is the method 
where other papers that are situated in the same cluster can be analyzed for their origin from a paper mill. Um, another study by Adam Day, this is a commercial project actually, Adam Day uh, has um, and offers paper mill alarm and he used machine learning tools to uh, analyze similarities between papers and then to predict other papers uh, already published. And it's also possible to, to detect uh, papers uh, that are submitted to the journal, so not, not only published, so if this tool is used by, by publishers. What is also possible to use, um, and I a bit mention it later, network analysis because, well, uh, scholars uh, who use paper mills to uh, publish papers, they have a certain collaboration anomalies. So actually, <laughs> conclusion of this part of my talk that forensic scientometrics is our future to detect um, uh, and analyze paper mill papers. Oh, and at the end of my uh, talk, I would like to analyze some collaboration anomalies uh, that I identified analyzing papers from international publisher. This is a paper mill based in um, Russia, and they offer co-authorship slots openly since December 2018. And the price range is different. Uh, so from 180 euros to much more euros. I don't see how much because it's, it's written, but you see it. And actually, uh, I analyzed about 2,000 authors um, of this paper mill in a wide range of disciplines during several years. So this is an example of an offer. It's automatically translated into English. And so you can see that this offer includes the title of the paper, then the year of publication, number of co-authorship slots for sale, so we can learn about the number of co-authors, the country of the journal, and we can see that the same, according to Scopus, uh, there is the same paper with a similar title, with a similar, with the exact number of co-authors published in the exact year and published in a, in a journal with the same country. So it gives, this authors give enough information to detect real papers. So I created this kind of a list of papers uh, that, it was possible to identify uh, using these offers. And what are the results? Uh, as per today, about 460 papers are identified. Uh, it's about 40% of all offers uh, between 2019 and, uh, and uh, the middle, mid-2022. Uh, these papers have been published in 152 authentic and three hijack journals. Um, they were published by more than 800 scholars from 39 countries and affiliated with more than 300 universities. So as for um, scholars by... Um, by country, we can see that the majority of co-authorship slots are purchased by Russian scholars, but we can see that actually paper mill is international because there are scholars from China, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, um, also from developed countries, from USA, for example. So another example of an offer um, that Actually, it offers some uh, abstract where the future authors can name the city where the study has been done. So it's 
no, just insert your CT. And um, we can see some co-authorships already associated with a certain country, like the first co-authorship is associated with the China because uh, this paper mill just mentioned the country that future scholars who would like future clients, potential clients could see with whom they are going to publish this paper. And this paper was published in Thinking Skills and Creativity and later it was, uh, it, it, it was retracted. Or another case of the paper from this paper mill that it has not only uh, fabrication but also uh, plagiarism. This paper was published by a scholar on, on your left, was published by a scholar affiliated with the New York University and all the information uh, has been taken from a paper published in Russian uh, about a certain trees in uh, Ural in Russia. And so they have just took all the data and they changed uh, a Russian city to Detroit in the US. And that was published like that. And unfortunately, journal didn't take any action to retract this paper. What we can learn about how this paper mill submits papers. So this is quite interesting because the majority of papers have been submitted to individual journals. So they have a rule, one paper, one journal, in order that I guess I hypothesize that journals don't see uh, similarities between papers. And at the same time, we can see uh, that some journals Individual journals have published well, 10, 11, or 13 papers with maximum 34. But this is the result of a different strategy or a specific collaboration or, or special issues. So distribution by publisher. So we can see that this paper mill actually submits papers to different kinds of publishers, both reputable and uh, or university um, uh, university publishers. Uh, also, what was possible to detect that Paper Mill has a specific collaboration with editors of the journals, and this can be seen in some NDPI journals where three editors of special issues or editors of the journal have published um, or have assisted to publish about 20 papers because or they have been co-authors of such papers or they were um, editors of special issues or academic editors of, um, of the papers. And that was um, all these uh, editors, they, they worked in a specific university in one Eastern European country. Uh, and this was a good predictor for other papers from, from, from this paper mill. Or uh, this, paper, uh, this paper mill just offered special issues and you can see that some offers just included a number of authors and we can detect just all papers from uh, special issue that are associated with, um, with a paper mill. And then what we can see uh, about just having all this data set of papers from, from this paper mill, we can um, detect, identify specific collaboration anomalies because papers from these authors uh, often might not be familiar with each other. They don't have common research interests they are affiliated with different universities, they specialize in different disciplines and might not specialize in the topic of the paper mill. Also, they have a higher number of co-authorships in comparison with the average in their disciplines, specifically in social sciences and humanities, and they have absolute alphabetical disorder, even in disciplines where alphabetical order is the main uh, way to, 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 to provide the, uh, the, the authorship order. 
What is also interesting is if we plot uh, all these papers from paper mill, here is just the half, I guess, because I took this from dimensions. And we can see that the majority of papers, they constitute the connected, uh, connected network, connected component of the network, even if papers are published in different disciplines. And so that, that means that papers like in engineering, mathematics, uh, or in um, uh, education or psychology, they are connected to each other. So this is this big component of uh, connected component of, of papers. Um, so I have, I guess, three minutes left. So um, I would like to say that after my, my study, this paper mill uh, uh, started to fight back. They published uh, an archive of their papers, of the papers, uh, just uh, making um, uh, making the archive of all papers, about 100,000 papers affiliated with Russian universities. And there were a lot of unfortunate, I mean, they, they were legitimate papers. And this was to, I don't know, distort the investigation of this paper mill. And so my conclusion, so this is my last slide. What uh, we now can make conclusions about paper mills and how they distort centimetric results. First of all, I hypothesize that paper mill bias centimetric results of collaborations because uh, paper mill papers have a higher number of co-authorships in comparison with the average, for example, in social sciences and humanities. Paper mill papers can have um, a specific international collaboration from different countries, and uh, it's quite not possible to have this kind of collaboration. So we can see an increase in international uh, collaborations, though it's not organic collaborations, but because of the paper mills. Uh, paper mills have different red flags and patterns and it could be a challenge to generalize and identify the full sample of paper mill, of paper mill papers. And we need to know specific patterns of specific paper mills to make kind of predictions. Also, there is a challenge of identification of paper mills because thousands of papers are not detected. So if, according to Adam Day, there are 400,000 papers from paper mills, well, who is going to, to detect them? This is a big challenge because they are still in the literature. There is a challenge of retraction because journals reaction is a big challenge for academic integrity because journals, sometimes they don't reply. They don't investigate or they investigate and don't find misconduct in clear cases. And also, I would like to mention that many instruments that are currently developed to identify paper mill papers, they just uh, are connected with symptoms of, uh, um, of the problem, but not of their cause. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, I will be happy to, to reply.